Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to fix Unreal's depth of field preview in the viewport, as well as improving the depth of field in your renders, okay? So this is a trick that I use on a daily basis. I don't work without it. So before we get started, I just want to point out that I have a new Instagram channel. So my previous Instagram account that I had linked on this channel was not really relevant to the channel at all. It was my personal one and, it, you know, all sorts of things from photography to random posts and blurbs. But this time, this new Instagram account is really focused towards this channel, towards Unreal and VFX, CGI specifically. So it's a lot more relevant to you guys. So go check it out, go give it a follow, and let's get started. All right, so in my scene right here, I've got just a, a very quick forest setup. Um, forgive me, this is something I just threw together in 20 minutes. It's not my best work and performance is not awesome either. Um, but for the sake of this video, it should do the trick. So I've set up a sequence here with one camera with an 85 millimeter at f1.4. If you're like me, you've probably wondered why the depth of field out of the box by default in Unreal just tends to look really bad, okay? So let's take a look at the scene right here, okay? I'm in my camera mode here, and you'll see, especially in the background, notice how the ferns, the the, the leaves here are kind of, compl they're half blurred out and they're half sharp. There's this weird haloing effect going around the rocks here. Now let's, let's take a look and let's draw the debug focus plane, right? So the only thing that's in focus should be these leaves in the foreground. But unfortunately, like the leaves in the background are also kind of in focus-ish. And now the reason why this is a problem is not only does it look bad, but it's going to render completely different. Let's go into full screen and see how this looks. Okay, got the full screen. Now you'll see things are, the background already does look a little bit better when you're in full screen. So right now I'm on a 2560 by 1440 monitor. So if I render in HD, it's going to look a bit better, but, but look at the mid ground here. Look at the, the leaves in the tree here, right? They're kind of, there's this haloing effect going on. Half of it isn't sharp. Half of it is totally blurred out. Same with the grass, same with the ferns. This looks like shit. And once, and you'll notice once again, when you go back, things look totally different depending on your resolution. So let's say you're working like this in your viewport, you go to your camera, you draw your debug focus plane and you align like, okay, I want the tree to be in perfect focus. Okay. And then you render your shot. And now look at the haloing on the rocks here. You render your shot and it's going to look completely different. Okay. There's a solution to this and it's incredibly simple and why it's not like this out of the box. I don't know. So what we're going to do, you're going to open a console command menu and type R dot temporal AA dot up sampling zero. And just like that, did you see the difference there? Look how perfect the depth of field looks now. Okay, let's go into full screen just to get a better impression. Look how, how different. Look now, there's no weird haloing effect happening anywhere else. Let's go ahead and toggle it back on to see where it was. So this is what it was with it on by the default settings. Look at these blades of grass. And look at this uh, odd shadowing on the on the leaves here. Let's turn it back on. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to compare these two renders out of this, okay? All right, so I've got two renders here. Uh, just to be clear, both renders are using the exact same Unreal scene. They're using the exact same camera, and it is the exact same frame. The only thing that's changed here is one what rendered with temporal AA upsampling set to zero, which is console command. And the other one here on the right is just straight out of the renderer, either sequence or movie render queue with, with default settings. Okay. So that is literally the only difference here. Now let's zoom in and just take a look at the ferns and the rock in the background here. See, look at how day and night these different, these renders are. Okay. Uh, we've got this weird haloing effect going on around the ferns. It's like this half sharp, half blurry look. It, it doesn't, it looks terrible, to be honest. Let's take a look at this bush in the back here. Uh, it's kind of like, once again, you got this haloing, half sharp, half blurry. Whereas in render A here on the left, the out of focus elements are nice and soft. You've got this bokeh that's properly being rendered. Um, it just looks so much better. Let's take a look at the grass as well. The grass is kind of like this sharp, noisy mess. Whereas in the left render here, everything is soft and, you know, properly out of focus. Now keep in mind, we're at zoomed at 200% here. So it's, it's obviously going to be a little bit pixelated and that sort of thing. But when you zoom out to 100%, 
okay? Things just look a lot better. Now, one thing that really catches my eye, and that is right up here in the leaves, okay? Look at how all that bokeh, okay? It, the result is just so much better. Now, both of these were rendered with the movie render queue. Uh, on the left here, I would use all the subsampling and all the nice goodness that you should be using if you're using the movie render queue. On the right hand side here, it's just straight out of movie render queue, no fancy settings. It's essentially the same thing as using the sequencer. Okay, so I'm going to include both of these images in the description below so you can check them out and see for yourself how it looks and see the comparison. Um, it's going to be a lot easier if you open both these images up in Photoshop and compare. Um, because the quality is going to be much better, okay? Uh, you're not going to get this YouTube compression going on. So there you have it. If this doesn't convince you to use this console command, nothing will. So to eliminate any kind of confusion, I've made this handy chart here that indicates and tells you when you should be using this console command and when you shouldn't, okay? So if you're using the sequencer or the default movie render queue, you absolutely should be using this console command. If you're rendering with the movie render queue and you're using the subsampling method, then you don't need to use the console command. And for just regular viewport usage, yes, you absolutely should be using the console command. Even if you're not rendering anything, the extra quality of the field you get directly in your viewport is immensely helpful. I cannot stress this enough. Now, in order to get your renders to use this, you need to set them up to use the correct console command. So if you're using sequencer, you need to execute this console command via a level blueprints. Okay, so we're gonna go up here to blueprints, open level blueprint. So we're gonna open the level blueprint menu here. You should have event begin play, and I'm gonna add console execute console command. You know, plug this into your event begin play. And you're going to type the same console command that we just used. So r dot temporal aa dot upsampling zero. Okay. Hit compile. Now every time you render your sequence, it's going to be using this console command. Now if you're like me and you use the movie render queue instead, this is how you do it. So let's open a movie render queue. And let's go to my config here, my settings here. In your console variables tab you need to go ahead and go add a little plus and we're going to type in r dot temporal aa dot upsampling zero and just leave the value at zero right here and that's as simple as that that's all you need to do to make sure that your renders are using this console command if you don't know how to use the subsampling method i have a video about it right here go check it out i go through these console commands these four that i have here in depth how to set this up properly, so on and so forth. So regardless of what you're rendering with, I recommend having it on even in your viewport, even when you're not rendering, because it gives a much better representation of what your depth of field actually looks like, okay? So everyone, once again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If this has helped you in any way, leave a comment down below, hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.